Hey guys, Joe here, and if you are an enthusiast like me, you probably can guess what's behind this bag. You probably also saw the short I did, which also shows exactly what's going to be behind this bag. But I wanted to show this one because I've shown its competitor, and I want to be thorough. If you are new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. I appreciate it. I do reviews. I do some range stuff, however, weather and time dependent. I can't do that every week, but I will be getting out there more in 2022. This one is from Liberty Arms. This video is coming out ahead of the ones that have already been up on the channel because it needs to come out because it's more important because this one will not be here by the time that video comes out. I guarantee it. This will sell probably today. If one of you doesn't buy it, somebody will walk in and say, ooh, I want. So what is behind Le Bag? Well, you have to go to Liberty Arms, Google them, call them. They open at 10 o'clock today, Friday, when this video goes up and say, I want that. And what that is, is the Springfield SA-35, which is, as you can tell from visually looking at it, Springfield's take on the Browning High Power. Show that it's clear, drop the mag, show that the mag is empty. And what you have here is a very faithful recreation of a Browning High Power double stack 9mm. I looked at the Gerson MC P35, we'll just be saying P35 for the rest of the review if I do any more comparing. And in that video, I had Daniel's Browning High Power to compare it to. So I figured it would be appropriate to go ahead and have his here again. This is an actual Browning High Power. It's not like a Belgian made one or an original one, but it's still a Browning High Power, unlike some of the knockoffs from Turkey and whatnot. Yes, I said it. Take that. Gosh darn it. But this one has had a few upgrades. He had a problem with the safety. Browning put ambidextrous safeties on it as well as the upgraded hammer and he's added night sights. Outside of that, the internals on this gun are stock. Also has a Mechgar magazine. Not sure when that happened, but it does now. The new Mechgar mags are 15 plus one for the gun, so you have a carry capacity of 16. The one in his is a 13 rounder because he's had his for quite a while. Let's move that over. Actually, let's bring it back. As we can see from looking at it, dimensionally, obviously, it's exactly the same. Same length, same height, same width. Everything is pretty much spot on. His has an original set of grips on it, but I really like these wood grips. I'm going to say that right now. I'm not a big fan of wood grips, but these, these are nice wood grips, and they're cut very well to the gun. But as you can see, the lines are very similar. This line is not wavy on the Springfield like it was on the Gerson, which is just a little bit of extra quality control. But overall, yes, very, very, very true to the original. However, it does have a couple of weird things they did. They went with the single-sided safety, perfectly fine. Standard 1911, a single-sided safety. But then they added a target-style sight, which is weird. I mean, Springfield does sights pretty well. I like that sight picture. However, that's not a factory original style Browning sight. And then they went with the upgraded hammer. If they were going to do those two things, I just don't see why they didn't throw the AMB stock because obviously they have the hole all the way through like it should be. That's a little bit weird. But other than that, dead nuts original. Comes in the regular box. Again, you get one magazine in the bag. It's going to be 650 bucks through Liberty Arms. So it's roughly $200 more expensive than the Gerson was. Traditional style external extractor. Very nice ejection port. Bushingless front. And the guide rod, this whole front dust cover, is just to hold the guide rod in the spring. No undercut. Again, it's very traditional. However, it's a full-size, full metal gun, so plenty of room to get your hand on it. Fits very nice in the hand. I like the angle. A little bit Beretta-esque, a little bit CZ-esque, and it works really nice. Natural hold, natural aim. I like it. Well, let's talk about the trigger. Trigger pull is very much like the original High Power, with one major exception take this finger, I'm going to stick it up inside the magwell, and I'm going to do this. Do that with your high power or your Gerson. What that means is Springfield has designed their SA-35 without a ding-dang magazine disconnect because an original high power and even the Gerson has the worst thing ever designed by any idiot ever. Uh... It's not safe to pull a trigger when your gun has things in it. 
well, what are you doing then? Well, you have to put a magazine in it to pull the trigger. Does that make sense to you? So yes, they eliminated the magazine disconnect, which is awesome. Speaking of the trigger, single action feels almost identical to a Browning. Maybe slightly heavier, but again, this is a brand new gun. The gun I've been comparing it to has thousands upon thousands of rounds through it. But very nice trigger. Comes back, a little bit of take up to a wall, and then breaks. Reset. Can't feel it. You can barely hear it, just like an original, and breaks. I like it. Again, the sights are slightly upgraded from a factory browning, which is a hell of an improvement in my book. I can easily pick up that front post, and I like a blacked out rear sight. And one thing that Springfield does on a lot of their sights is they serrate the rear, which makes it even easier to prevent glare or anything from getting in your eyes. I like it. Now we're at a point where we have a couple of differences, and they are not detrimental. If you buy the Springfield and you like the Springfield, love the Springfield, great. However, there are some internal changes between a Springfield and an original Browning that actually limit the compatibility. If you go back and watch the other video with the Gerson, you'll see that I was able to mix and match parts from both guns and assemble both guns, and both guns worked. That's not the case with the Springfield, and I'll show you why as soon as we take it apart. In order to do that, we're going to safety check it again. I know, he safety checks too much. But go ahead and make sure there's nothing in there, physically, visually, do all that stuff. And while this slide is locked back to this notch, that's your safety notch, that's your takedown lock open. Go ahead and wiggle this up just a little bit while pushing on your takedown. It's very tight because it's a brand new gun. Pop it out, and you can just take it apart. Very easy, very simple. you got to be careful. This spring is very heavily sprung. I know, it's weird. Oops. Not captive, so be careful again about that unless you want that self-launching feature to initiate itself. Looks just like the original barrel and guide rod. We'll be taking a look at those in just a second. The inside of the slide, very nicely made, very nicely finished. The Cerakote, I think it's a Cerakote, is very nicely done. There is your firing pin tube. And as you can see, if you are an original Browning fan, that looks nothing like the inside of a regular Browning high power. In order to prove that, we will go ahead and lock this one back. Double check, nothing in it, nothing in it, nothing in it. Go ahead and do the same thing here. Shoot for the moon. Drop out the barrel the exact same way and take a look inside here. Same browning cuts or same lug cuts up top but you'll see the firing pin tube is designed different. This is going to come into play because you can see the way it's cut down into there versus on this gun means that it's going to have some issues with slide to frame compatibility. Barrels are very much the same. Those would interchange, no problem. Same thing goes for the guide rods and your slide lock slide releases. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the Springfield frame with the original parts. Don't need to show you that the barrels are the same since the barrels are the same. These can be a bit fiddly. Make sure your barrel is in the right position when you do this. Otherwise, it's not going to line up correctly. And go ahead and put your spring back in. Hard to do when I'm trying to do it from the side, but yeah, once you get it started. There we go. And that's not right. It's really weird how specific the spring has to be inserted in these guns. Yeah, there you go. That's not going to work. You see that? If the springing goes in, springing goes in like that, it's not going to work. So, we're going to pull it out. Make sure the slide is locked up and we're going to try again. I'm going to come back when I have it done because it can be a little bit fiddly and when I'm trying to do it live, it never works. So we are back. I've assembled both slides. The thing I always forget is that this little angled nubbin here actually needs to be at the base of the recoil spring and slide. But what I wanted to show you is this is the Springfield frame and this is the Browning slide. On the Gerson, I was able to just bring it on back and everything worked 100%. But as you can see, without 
being able to come all the way back, this slide will not work on the Springfield top or bottom, which means that the cuts down here are slightly different. This is completely different from that. However, because this is flat and doesn't have the indent that's required to clear there, and that's one of the biggest visual differences there, The height of the ejector you can see is completely different but if you take a Springfield slide you can put it right onto a browning frame and run it what that means is if you can find one of these used and you happen to have one of these with a busted slide you can change out that however it does unfortunately hamper some of your interchangeability because once you put it back on the right gun it's perfectly fine and again I know why, why should we care about parts interchangeability from one manufacturer to the other? Well, it also means that they deviated to some of the tricks that you do to modify a Browning might not work. And again, some of the upgrade parts might not work. Now, most of your frame-based parts should work just fine, like your triggers, your hammer, stuff like that. However, you have to be careful because, again, slide stuff might not work. And I know there are some guys out there that love the high power so much, they'll get their slides custom milled, things like that. So you may be thinking, hey, I'll buy a Springfield slide, put it on top here. That way I don't have to modify an original Browning slide. Well, it's not going to happen. So you will need to get yourself a Browning or a Gerson and start your modifications there. That being said, does that mean you shouldn't buy this one? Hell no. That means you should definitely buy this one. If I liked Browning's a little bit more, I'd buy it. But I'm not willing to uh, take one away from the public that deserves it. If we had three or four of them in the shop at once, I would definitely take one, shoot a few hundred rounds through it, and let you guys know what I thought. But I have put quite a few rounds through Daniel, so I know how a Browning shoots. And I don't need to buy a gun just to sell it in a week, just to tell you that. Again, if you're interested in this firearm, Liberty Arms, 10 o'clock this morning, it is available. If you miss your opportunity, give them your name and number. They'll keep an eye out for you because I'm sure other stores are marking up the cost of this firearm, which is the other downside. It has an MSRP of a little over 700 bucks, but we're selling it at 650 So give them a call. Tell them I sent you. Tell them you want that gun. And don't take the fact that it's not 100% interchangeable with the Browning as a bad thing. I just wanted to point out that a gun that's $200 cheaper has full compatibility with a Browning. So do with that as you will. Come back for the next video. And as always, I'll talk to you later.